total artistic control as far as I needed it. Uh, but it was. I've, I've, I've been impatient when I published, published my first bug bite. We're actually three months late paying me, which is. Uh, <coughs> <clears throat> to a 17 year old, that, that seemed outrageous, but as, um, I've, uh, I've, I've left my own handle with that, uh, it's waiting for longer than that since then. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, so, in, in a fit of peak, really, I, I, I not only set up my own publishing house, but I also took my. It was their best-selling product off them through their uh, further recourse because their their contract was far lax than any farmers in today's industry. Um, our software projects, we the the Luna Six did take over this island. Yeah, it was fair, fair comment. We. Uh, there's, um, it was a, most of us were very young, and we we didn't have the self-discipline. And and my partners who were, were attempting to manage everything, they uh, they they didn't have what it took to bring. Like, uh, yeah. and, and that was that's, that was a common thing. You had um, people who were in it just for the money. Who wanted everybody. Who wanted all the people creating the games to, to just behave and write games. And uh, and there was those of us writing games who. Wanted to finish our games, but we didn't want to be die of boredom in the meantime. And um, and we were all very young and and a bit wild. And so, uh, in spite of all the, whatever the business situation was at any company, there's um, they were crashing out left and right and centre because. Uh, But it was a fun time, and we did produce the games, and we were selling them, and we were doing the business, and we were, uh, and the industry grew. I think it might have, um, one gets the impression that, that there was a lull in the industry uh, when the 16-bit machines began to die. But, uh, I'm not sure if any any sales graphs will show such a bit, but. I'm not sure if everybody perceives that there was this sort of gap between the end of the Amiga and the start of the PlayStation. Uh, certainly appeared the media were less interested in video games for a long time. And, and now as Andrew said earlier, the, um, it is very much more expensive to develop a game. But actually, I, 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 I want to put my personal view on this, is that I'm not entirely sure that the, the, common, the commonly received wisdom is that games cost millions of pounds to develop. And um, this perception is uh, based on the fact that most games do actually cost millions of pounds to develop, <laughs> and it's uh, but I think that in some ways that's 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 no reason why why you can't why you can't actually 
write a game in, in your bedroom by yourself. Well, maybe not by yourself anymore, unless, excuse me, unless you're also a very good musician and artist. But small teams of bedroom coders uh, can still write games. But what we have today is we, we have a stranglehold on the market by the console manufacturers. And so you can't really bring a game to market without their permission. And um, any complaints about restrictive trade practices are, will be answered in, in a court somewhere in Japan at, like, at their convenience. And we should find out if you can afford a lawyer rich enough to know who their lawyer is. And, uh, oh well, I don't know that ring. But, um, but, let's remember that uh, Peter Jackson's best film, which uh, I'm sure everyone will agree is bad taste. <laughs> yeah, that, that cost 10,000 New Zealand dollars to make. And uh, there are rest my case on that subject. So. <laughs> Um, but, so the future of the, the future of the industry actually might uh, well, it's, it's possible it might, like pop music, it might end up eating itself. And um, but then once it's it, once it's eating itself, does it still carry on? Uh, Uh, I think the blockbuster will always rule the, the day people are like be waiting for the blockbusters. More than so. But there look. Okay, train of consciousness here. Just like, excuse me, I mean, yeah, it'd be good if like, everyone's got any questions there. Yeah. So, <laughs> like that. What are you up to now? What am I up to now? I'm actually. Um, I have recently been just, just chugging away like working on my own engines, my own tools and um, ready for the uh, and but I'm giving up. It's to be honest, right now I just want a job because I, what I do is I get to a stage where I think I've got I've got the time and leisure. See, one thing you don't realise is when you're a bedroom coder at your home is that how much your bedroom costs to run. <laughs> and that's uh, <clears throat> when you're using your parents' electricity and parents' fridge. And, um, so that's a great advantage you have when you uh, when you uh, of course, uh, you take for granted at the time. And uh, it's, but whenever I've got enough saved to like pay the rent for six months, then I just bury myself. I say, right, okay, I, I, I can choose a game in six months. And actually, if you remember that six months, if you, any project you estimate will take six months, that actually takes five years, <laughs> and, uh, then that's pretty accurate, so so if you've got five years savings, you can afford to take six months off to write again. And, um, but the internet, of course, makes it a lot easier for teams to cooperate without having to all physically get together. And uh, I, I think we might see, with the model of, uh, of a development company is still 120 people all in the same pe same place. That's, that's approximately the number of people who are working at the uh, at the la last place I was working at. And so the last thing I, I, I put out was uh, a Game Boy game. It was Scrabble published by Ubisoft. And actually I did 90% uh, of that myself. Uh, it was pretty much a a normal one-man effort with some input from other places.